Well, Harley's first adventure bike has finally launched and what a glorious day for everyone. Except for Harley dealers, which will now be forced to allow those dirty, muddy adventure peasants into their cruiser shrine dealerships. Madness. Welcome back to Long Way Home everyone. The place where getting your motorcycle news is easier than identifying a dog, but not by much. I wonder what everyone's looking at. It's eating off the floor, it's definitely a dog. I wonder what kind of dog that is. I'm gonna tell you straight off the bat, I'm not gonna keep you in suspense until the end of the video, that I like the Pan America. I like what Harley has done with it for the most part. What I however do not appreciate is Harley's 25 minute launch video where they presented no specs whatsoever and basically self praised themselves for being in the adventure game for a very long time and off-road being in their DNA. With the introduction of the Pan Am, you know, there's going to be people out there that are going to say, you know, Harley Davidson is maybe a little late to this game. And, you know, my answer to that is, this is our game. This is the game that we've always played. If there were no roads when he started building bikes, Harley, then uh, all bikes were off-road bikes. But anyway, let's forget about Harley shenanigans and see what the new Pan America brings to the table. Stick around. The Pan America comes in two flavors, the base 1250 model, which is more road oriented, and the 1250 Special, which is more off-road oriented. Basically the same bike, but the Special has a few extra accessories, spoke tires, and a more clever suspension setup. At the heart of the Pan America lies the 1250 Revolution Max engine. No, it's not made by Rotax and no, it's not from a Buell. There is quite a bit of clever kit inside this engine and it definitely shows Harley moving into more uncharted territory. This is a high revving V-twin which puts out 150 horsepower at around 9000 RPM, more than enough for any adventure bike in my opinion and manages an okayish 127 Newton meters or 94 pound feet of torque. Holly does have an ace up their sleeve to give you more torque at lower speeds, which is exactly what you want on off-road, and that is their own implementation of map-controlled continuously variable cam timing. This means you get strong torque at lower revs without it failing further up the RPM scale. One more creature comfort Harley has built into this engine is no valve clearance service intervals. The cams are chain driven and the engine has automatic hydraulic clearance adjusters, so no valve clearance is needed. However, normal service intervals are on the low side at just 8,000 kilometers, but uh, they shouldn't cost an arm and a leg at least. Braking is your standard affair of dual 320 millimeter discs on the front with Brembo calipers and a single 280mm disc on the rear. Pretty normal on large adventure bikes and they do the job very well. Harley has put linked braking on the Pan America, which is great news. This means that anytime you pull the brake lever, the rear brake will also engage and this is all managed by the bike's computer. Suspension is handled by 47mm Showa forks and a monoshock on the rear, all adjustable for preload, compression and rebound. The Pan America Special also gets electronic semi-active suspension. This means the bike automatically adjusts the suspension damping depending on the road surface and the five different profiles you can set it to. Harley has also come up with an adaptive ride height system. You can only get this on the Pan America Special. It will cost you a pretty penny at a thousand US dollars and it will automatically lower the bike by about five centimeters or two inches when you come to a stop and raise it back up when you start rolling. It's meant to give shorter riders more confidence since they can now flat foot the bike, but it's still a thousand dollars. The fuel tank is 21 liters or 5.6 gallons and with that you should be able to cover around 400 kilometers or 260 miles between refills. Another great design choice by Harley was to put the fuel filler cap to the side of the tank so you don't have to take your tank bag off when refilling. A minor detail that goes a long way. Electronics and rider aids have traditionally never been one of Harley's strong points. Until now that is. The Pan America is packed to the gills with everything. 
In the front, you get a 6.8 inch display. This is a touch display. Obviously, the touch doesn't work while you're riding. It is mounted on a tiltable mount, so you can always see it whether you're riding standing or sitting. Another great little design detail. It comes with both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It has full map navigation or just turn by turn navigation. It's up to you and is widget driven, meaning that you can customize it to display whatever you want to see on it. Rider aids galore as well. Everything from cornering ABS, cornering traction control, hill hold, five different riding modes. Welcome to 2015, Harley. Now, let's talk a bit about weight, the bane of all adventure bikes. The Pan America comes in at 242 kilograms for the standard version and 253 kilograms for the special. Nothing to write home about. It falls pretty much in line with its competition. It's a fat cow and should be treated as one. I guess the good news is that it's not something like 300 kilograms, this being Harley's first iteration. And speaking of good news, Harley didn't pull a live wire and actually made the price competitive. 17,100 US dollars for the standard version and 20,000 for the Pan America Special. In line with almost any big premium adventure bike out there. Alright, now let's move over to what at first impression I don't like about the Pan America. The front radiator should have been split and moved higher up. It's gonna get crusted in mud and damaged on off-road. So a protector is now a must and not just a nice to have. Underneath the radiator, Harley seems to have put the voltage regulator, or at least that's what it looks in the photos, that will get demolished immediately on off-road, so another protector is necessary there as well. The central stand does not come as standard. This should be non-negotiable on adventure bikes, as the center stand is useful for doing any sort of work on your bike, and lastly, that it doesn't come with a shaft drive. Shaft drives are life, nobody got time for cleaning chains. All in all, a great move by Harley. They should have done this eons ago. I can't wait to go and ride review one and with their huge dealer network they should have no problem selling a lot of these. Unless uh, the dealers don't want to. Imagine walking into a dealership and saying, uh, yes hello, I would like to look at the Pan America please. The what? The, the Pan America? Oh yeah, yeah we have that. But uh, why don't we put you in the seat of a new beautiful shiny CFO tripe? That's what we ride around here. And you see, when you stop at a, at a traffic light, the CFO trike stands it doesn't fall over it stands on its three wheels the pan america just just uh, don't do that harley dealers no 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 anyway head on over to the comment section below and let us all know how the launch of the pan america has you either disappointed or made you extremely excited in your nether regions i'd love to hear your take on it well that's the show for today everyone if you've enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up and if you think you've learned something new consider subscribing or becoming one of our patrons to help us make more of these shows cheers and i'll see you on the next one